I am so pumped for today's show because I'm going to review the TAD CE1 TX speaker. Now, I don't know if you guys know TAD. It stands for Technical Audio Devices Laboratory. They are based in Japan where they design and hand build all of their products. Now, they started out in the 1970s as a pro sound company and they had, they had some of their customers, I can name drop a few. They had Jimmy Page, uh, Prince, and uh, also the Eagles. The Eagles used TAD drivers in their concert sound uh, systems. So that's pretty impressive. They moved into consumer high-end audio in the early 2000s. And I remember hearing the TAD uh, reference and the TAD compact reference, and these were just absolute state-of-the-art speakers, really, really, really expensive speakers, and were totally knocked out. Those were designed by Andrew Jones. So anyway, my hands-on experience didn't happen until 2017 when I reviewed the TAD ME1 for CNET. And anyway, I'll link to that review below. But as I read the review, <laughs> my own words, I was thinking like, yeah, this is like deja vu all over again because the CE1TX sounds a lot like, well, what I wrote in 2017. So there's a sound there that's very high transparency, very neutral, very accurate. It is a pro sound company in its roots. So that should be expected. So let's get down to the, the details of the design. It's a three-way with a five and a half inch concentric driver. The tweeter is a one and three eighths inch beryllium dome. The woofer is a seven inch uh, unit and it has five layers of woven and non-woven aramid. That, that's what it says on the website. And I'm gonna link to the TAD website where you can get more detailed information about the details, the tech details of the design. Oh, so get this, the CE1TX is a base reflex design but it doesn't have a big fat round port on the front or on the back. No, it doesn't go that way at all. It actually has slotted ports on the front, along the sides of the speaker, in the front and also on the rear. And the sides of the speaker are covered by a thick aluminum plate. Beautifully finished. Be I mean, everything about the finish of the speaker is, is exquisite. Uh, the wood is olive. And it's, you know, just this super high gloss finish on it, really tastefully done. Round back, you'll find a very chunky set of bi-wire speaker cable connectors. Oh, the warranty, I don't want to forget this stuff. The warranty runs to three years. Let's take a look at the specifications. And no, yes, like so many, it is a four ohm speaker. The sensitivity is on the low side, meaning 85 dB. That's definitely on the low side. And oh, one spec that really jumps out, and I can tell you about this without looking at the number. I can just tell you from my experience of living with this thing. It's really heavy. It weighs nearly 64 pounds. It is very solidly constructed. Actually, I'll show you a picture of, of how it's braced. It uses birch wood as bracing material inside the cabinet. What about the price? I'm assuming some of you guys are on the edge of your seat wondering, Steve, come on, get you the price. Yeah, well, I think you probably guess these are very expensive speakers. They are $32,500 a pair, and the stands are optional. Those are $2,500 a pair, so that's, that makes it a $35,000 set of speakers. A lot of money, but... I'm looking back and I'm checking out the price list, the TAD ME1, that speaker sells for $14,500 a pair. I didn't check the price of the stands, sorry. But anyway, in my head, I'm com mentally comparing six years apart, the ME1 has a lot, a lot of what I love about the CE1 TX. So if you can't quite handle $32,500, Maybe you could squeeze in uh, 14500 I know it's still a lot of money, but it is a lot of speaker for the money. I mean, this is, this is a keeper. This is probably, for a lot of people, their last speakers. You know, for this review, I really wanted to fully exploit the CE1TX's capabilities. And to do that, I decided to use a very high-powered amplifier that I will be reviewing shortly, 
the Gato PWR222. It's a monoblock amplifier, puts out 450 watts into 4 ohms. It's an expensive amplifier. And if for a preamplifier, I use the Pass Labs XP30. For a DAC, the uh, Mola Mola Tambaki. The uh, analog part of the system was my Technics SL1200G turntable with a Lyra Delos a moving coil cartridge. The Phono preamp was the Parasound JC3+. Plus. Now, all that together, not including cables, and the cables were by Triode Wire and uh, Analysis Plus and Cardus. All of the, the price of the entire system, not including the cables, was $90,000. A lot of money. And it really, it showed off, it showed off itself very, very well over the course of this review. But I also wanted to use some other amplifiers, ones that I'm more familiar with. So I used the NAD M23 Class D amplifier, the first watt uh, SIT3, low power, about 30 watts channel into 4 ohms, and also the Linear Tube Audio Ultra Linear Amp, which is 20 watts channel. I'm going to get into how those amps all sounded different with the CE1TX. You know, I want to talk about music, and if there was a theme song for this review, it would be Sly and the Family Stones, I Want to Take You Higher. That's what the CE1 did for me. It just elevated the reproduction of the sound of music. And right away, brass instruments, horns especially, trumpets, sounded so much more lifelike than I am used to. The leading edge response of this speaker is absolutely extraordinary. And yeah, horns can do brass really, really well. But you know, the clips horns that I lived with, I mean, the, the Cornwalls that I lived with and the Fortes, they didn't match the tonality of this speaker, of the CE1. The La Scalas that I heard recently, they couldn't touch what this speaker does with the sound of brass. And the high frequencies coming off that 1 and 3 8 inch beryllium tweeter were again like nothing else I've ever heard. The best high frequency response I know. And I'm listening to percussion and just it had this life to it, this energy to it that is again just a, a, a giant step ahead of what I've heard before. So it was really exciting, and yet, again, at the same time, not overly analytical, not overly critical of less than stellar recordings. I could listen to pretty much anything with the CE1s and have a big smile plastered across my face. Another thing is how well all of this translated to listening at very quiet, late night levels. Not all speakers of this type, of this size, can do that anywhere near what this speaker can do. I kept playing it quieter and quieter and quieter when I was listening at 1 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning. I didn't want to disturb Mrs. Audiophiliac. And I did not feel that urge, like, oh, if only I could play it louder. No, this speaker does quiet very, very well. Now, this was with, it's interesting, with these 450-watt monoblocks, 450 watts into 4 ohms, the Gato, uh, PWR222s. So it's not really about that they were high-powered amplifiers. It's just the way those amps you know, synergy with these speakers and other speakers. And I will, yes, I will be doing a review of the PWR222 in, well, within a couple of weeks or maybe a month or so. I love those amplifiers. Oh, and that beryllium tweeter, I knew it was there when I was listening to music that had cymbal crashes. You're just like, Bam! And it just exploded out of the speaker. And, and percussion, percussion, well-recorded percussion was just like fireworks, like oral fireworks of the energy coming off the speaker. Again, kind of like horns. Yeah, but this just more, they just sounded more complete than any horns I've ever heard in terms of the whole instruments. They were just more, there was just more there there out of this speaker than I'm used to. So that was really a thrill. Yeah, the way you, the way this speaker delivers the spatial aspects of a recording, and I don't just mean stereo imaging, I mean the, 
3D spatial part of the way it just gets out of the way. And by the way, the imaging isn't just wide and spacious, it's also really tall. Yeah, I was listening to some Kip Hanrahan LPs, and it did that thing. It just was this huge picture, this huge sonic picture of the sound. And it's kind of like what, what imaging is at its best. You can't see it, it's just, a, it's just an audio recording, but you feel like you can picture it in your head when it's so well played coming from a speaker like the CE1TX. Like I mentioned earlier, one of the most amazing things about these speakers with their incredible resolution is how well they play less than perfect recordings in less than perfect condition. Like this one, my Aretha Franklin's Greatest Hits. Now I've owned this record for more than 50 years. I've played it, I'm sure, many hundreds of times over all different kinds of turntables, but I always had, you know, decent turntables. And I was thoroughly enjoying hearing Aretha sound more fully present, more real, and just the band. This is a multi-channel recording, but it really feels like, and it probably was, all of them playing together live in the room with live vocals, not overdub vocals from Aretha. And that kind of excitement and the way they entered the, the rhythm section and the piano just, just kept you know, moving through these speakers I was in heaven. I was having the best time. And you know, you guys might be saying, Steve, you're, you're even more excited than you usually are. And I'd say it's true because this speaker had that kind of effect on me. It truly did. Taking it down a notch or two in terms of the musical energy, I played this Tim Buckley record. This is live in London, 1968. An amazing recording. This isn't high energy music. This is quiet folk music with a jazzy edge to it. And he was so there, just so tangibly there. It was goosebump territory. And you know, this is one of those records that I've owned a very long time, not 50 years, but a really long time. And I never had a reaction like this to this record. I like this record. But when I played it over the CE1TX, I felt more of that in the room sound. So I felt more like I was at the concert listening to Tim Buckley. It allowed me to, let's say, time travel through the recording and the sound coming out of the speakers to that event in 1968. <laughs> that's, that's why this is an amazing speaker. And if you, if you have a spare $32,500, or actually, if you actually have a spare $35,000 for the speakers in the stands, um, and I made you curious, uh, you might be thinking about it. All of my sonic descriptions up to this point, I was using the Pass Labs XP30 preamp and the Gato PWR222 monoblock power amps. So I decided to switch things around a little bit and insert the uh, first watt SIT3 power amp. Now that amp is much softer sounding than the, the 222s. Yeah, it was. But it had more uh, flesh and blood to the sound. It had more solidity to the sound, weightier. Like there was more lower mids, more upper bass. It just had more soul to it, more th thickness. Maybe that's the word, but not thick as in, uh, you know, not transparent or dark. No, it just had more weight to the sound. And I really, really like that. So for contrast, I decided to jump from the SIT3 to the NAD M23, Class D, uh, an amazing amplifier. Now that one, hmm, that one was a bit too transistory, too hard, not enough warmth, not enough soul in this pairing. And, it, and then I went br briefly back to the 222s just to go back to, you know, more faster sounding amplifier. And no, it's just that the NAD M23 pairing was not ideal with the CE1TX. It just took away too much, too much body from the sound of that speaker. Everything seemed more uptight coming out of the speaker. So the NAD M23 marriage with CE1TX was, was, was quick. It was in and it was out in 20 minutes or something. So here's a story. I was in the mood to play loud. And I played a lot of stuff loud, but I wanted to play something a bit louder. So I picked this record from 1959, this CD actually. 
Dave Brubeck at Carnegie Hall. And I'm really cooking with this music. And Dave Brubeck's unusual time signatures, I think it's very kinetic music. It just has this energy, this forward motion to it that I absolutely love. And I'm hitting 100 dB peaks on my meter for just a couple of minutes at a time. And I'm thinking, this is incredible. And Joe Morello's drums, especially his cymbal and his snare, just this crack to them, just blew me away. Yeah, this is with the Gato uh, PWR222, very high power and amplifiers. So yeah, I, I got that out of my system. I said, these speakers can handle that kind of level with ease. It was no sense of increasing distortion or nothing. No, they were as clear and clean at very high levels. I was a very happy camper. I was looking for some action on the bottom end, so I played some reggae, all different kinds, just all sorts of stuff. And what consistently surprised me was how clean the bass was. Uh, tight, fast, it's easy to hear, you know, follow bass lines and drums very, very clearly with reggae. And I'm thinking, I never heard reggae sound quite like that before. Yeah, really, really good stuff. Lee Perry mixes and stuff. Wow. I just, yeah, really, really impressive. I mean, Will some people who own this speaker add subwoofers, really high quality like JL audio subs? Probably. But if that's really what you want to do is shake the room, I, w I, wouldn't, I really wouldn't add a subwoofer to this speaker. I think you should take it on its own merits. If you really want that super, super deep bass, you should take your money and buy a different speaker that does that. This speaker is all about refinement and clarity and precision and accuracy. And adding a sub and making it gel with this speaker, I mean, I'm sure it can be done up to a point. But I, for me, if this was my money, I would want to take this speaker on its own merits. I think it's time to take a deep breath and recalibrate. Okay? The CE1TX is $35,000 a pair. What was the last time I reviewed a speaker that was anywhere near that expensive? Well, the answer is easy. <laughs> uh, late last year, I reviewed the Klipsch Jubilee, which is $36,000 a pair. Now that speaker is huge. I could literally walk inside that speaker, it was that big. It could be a closet. I heard it at a store, I didn't hear it here, so it's not a 100% fair comparison, but I will say that speaker, the Jubilee, just had these scale advantages that as good as the CE1 TX is cannot match. The Jubilee can play louder, much louder, with greater ease. It sounds bigger. The bass is way bigger. It has greater dynamics. It's just 100% effort, effortless. But it may come down to this. The Jubilee is going to sound better in larger rooms and the CE1TX is gonna sound better in smaller rooms. So that's one of the differences. Uh, the Jubilee is a very high sensitivity speaker. You could use it with very low powered amplifiers and have a blast. Um, the CE1TX likes power. You know, the, the PD, PWR222 is 450 watts into four ohms. I was putting those to good use some of the time. I'm sure not anywhere near 450 watts, but loud from here and there, because it was just so much fun. But the Jubilee is its own thing. It doesn't image as well. It doesn't have that. I mean, it's not the same thing. They're doing, they're going after different goals, clearly. But then there are my current reference speakers, the Pure Audio Project, do at 15, with 15 inch woofers. Now I know those speakers really well and they're right here and I did spend some time comparing the Pure Audio Projects to the TADs. Pure Audio Projects held their own surprisingly well, not in terms of transparency, clarity, purity. No, 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 it, 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 they don't do that. But in terms of scale, scale, big speakers can sound bigger, closer to the life size than the TAD can do. As good as it is, which is awfully, awfully good. No, the TAD does not sound like a huge speaker. And actually the, the Pure Audio Project isn't what I would call huge, but it's certainly that 15 inch woofer and eight inch full range driver can move some air more effortlessly. I don't know, but they're dipole speakers. This is just, just as much sound coming out of the back of the Pure Audio Project than the front. 
they just energize the room in a more complete way than the CE1 can do. And they are a mere $6,500 a pair, the Pure Audio Project, due at 15. So in terms of, let's say, value for the money, there's no contest. The Pure Audio Project just wins straight ahead. But if you're the kind of person who's looking for ultimate purity and accuracy and neutrality and still have a very musical speaker, the CE1 is absolutely extraordinary. I think what I just did is the, <laughs> in retrospect, I just did the, so Steve, what do you really think? What do you really think of the <laughs> TAD, the Technical Audio Devices Laboratory CE1, the Compact Evolution 1? It's a great speaker, a great speaker, but it's different horses for courses. You know, you got to find the speaker that works for you. If you have a small room and you're into that sort of precision, neutrality above all, and you got the, and you got the cash, the CE1 is definitely worth checking out. And now, speaking of checking out, it is time for the Audiophiliac Viewer System of the Day. This one is local. This one comes to us from Joe. He lives in Florham Park, New Jersey. Anyway, his amplifier is a Kinky Studios EX Series M1. Then there's a Carry Audio DMS 700 Network Audio Player slash DAC. Turntable is a clear audio concept with a satisfied carbon tone arm and a gold ring elite moving coil cartridge. Phono preamp is by Sutherland. It's the TZ Vibe. And then there's a Sony UBP-X1000ES 4K Blu-ray player CD transport. The speakers are T plus A Lignum LGS20s. And the sub is a RHEL Acoustics T0 Mark III. Thank you, Joe. This has been a long episode. I'm glad you're still here. My name is Steve Guttenberg, and I am the Audiophiliac. If you enjoy the show, if you enjoy these looking at the best of the best of the best episodes, please consider contributing to my Patreon. To do so is super easy to do. The address is on the screen right now. And yes, the, at the highest levels of contribution, the $50 a month or the $100 a month levels, you and I can have a conversation every month at the beginning of the month. And I so enjoy those conversations. I, I learn a lot. It's great hearing what my viewers are thinking. It's a, it's a terrific thing. Of course, if that's out of your price range and you just want to subscribe or contribute at a lower level, if you email me a question, I'd be way more likely to answer it than, than I would in a comment on a video. So that's the perk. Some people subscribe for a month or two and then they split, that's cool, and some stick around for many, many years. Anyway, if, if that's too much, no problem. Please like each episode. If, the, if you like them, please hit that like button. And if you have yet to subscribe, please do so. Please join us on our way to 250,000 subscribers, hopefully by the end of this year, or maybe early next year. But anyway, it's coming, it's definitely coming. Thanks to you all. And with that, I can say my work here is at last complete. Thank you again for watching, and I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.